can turn this into something positive and maybe it'll spread. He's the most positive person on his job. Now you're cute. I feel good. And thanks for joining us for Positively Milwaukee. Have you ever stayed in an Airbnb? Well, this morning we're going to show you a home that's available for those living with autism or PTSD. And from Franklin to Florida, we are there as local nurses travel south to battle coronavirus in a state with a spike in cases. And it's a crosswalk that will have you seeing funny why one local street department felt 3D was the way to go. But we begin with our signature piece. When a Milwaukee woman fell in love with a popular sport, she wanted to inspire her young niece. But she discovered a huge gap, so she filled it herself and changed the narrative. Nia Aboate is on the move, hoping to change a narrative. She's a triathlete from Milwaukee. And it was just another step to challenge myself fitness-wise. She's fallen in love with the sport. It elevates your mood. Like, who can be, you know, depressed on a sunny day? <laughs> and what I like about it is because it's not just one sport, so you're using different muscles. And so what I noticed is I was staying toned. Aboate shared her thrill of triathlons with her niece. Hi, my name is Naya, and this is my aunt Nia. And in 2013, I was 10 years old, and I was able to experience my aunt finish her first time. What did you think about it? I was pretty excited. I know if she can get into the sport, she would make the podium. She, you know, she's very athletic. And so I was really inspired by the possibility of getting her into the sport. So she went looking for children's books that might inspire a young girl of color. When I went to look to find a triathlon book, I couldn't find one, Carol. I, I Googled it and I couldn't find one. And I was like, how is that possible? Like. How is that possible? So Nia decided to write her own book to reach kids of all races. I mean, the book was a way to give people an opportunity to see some of the activity and um, expose them to it. The book is called I Am a Triathlete. It was made available with the help of a Kickstarter campaign. What message would you like to give people out there who are sitting on the couch right now? Do a walk around the block. Just start with a walk around the block. You know, just start from if you're down at the lakefront running from pole to pole, if if you're not really a runner, um, if you're not a swimmer, just start with putting your toe in the water down at the lakefront <laughs> and going up to your waist. <laughs> All of those things are free. You know, that doesn't cost you any money. Um, it just takes a little motivation to get you out of the house. So far, the book has been a success. Nia credits much of that to her great illustrator. Adriel is really a talent. Um, he helped to bring my story to life. Nia reminds us that triathletes come in all shapes and sizes. And if you're not a swimmer, please note, neither was Nia. Look here, I knew how to float on my back. And, 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 and they told me the distance and I was like, I can do that. I can float on my back for a half a mile. No problem. <laughs> they have swim angels that will swim behind you. And in some cases, you know, give you a flotation device, but not all. <laughs> well, I had one of the swim angels who swam up, you know, she saw me struggling and she said, you need some help, you need this flotation. And I said, no, I said, I just need you to swim behind me so that no one swims over me. Okay, I'm amazed at what Nia has accomplished. These are pictures from her first triathlon. I quickly see how this effervescent personality stays on track even with several interruptions during our interview. We got another truck coming. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and they're waving. <laughs> Usually I go like this to get them the hunk. <laughs> Nia has helped coordinate groups like Black Girls Run and Black Girls Do Bike. She shares there are different levels of triathlons where you work your way up. Often there's this perception that you have to do the Iron Man one, right? The one that has the longest distance. But I started doing Iron Girl, which is a sprint triathlon. And seeing her spirit and charm, I can't help but be touched by her can-do attitude. Nia Aboate changing the narrative, writing new chapters to help young people get up and running and discover their power within. I would say my purpose is to continue to encourage those that don't see themselves in books, 
Now you see yourself in this book. <laughs> the potential is there. I would say that would be my purpose. She is amazing. Now, more good news. Nia's I Am a Triathlete is the number one most funded triathlete children's book campaign in Kickstarter history. If you'd like more information, go to NiaTheAuthor.com. You can find that address in the link section of TMJ4 and on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page. A Milwaukee woman just celebrated an astonishing birthday. She is 107 years old. Trudy Claperich experienced the Spanish flu, World War II, and the Great Depression. Adriana Mendez was at the Milwaukee Catholic Homes Healthcare Center for the big celebration. When Trudy Claperich turned 100 years old, it was a major milestone and a big deal, but it was also seven years ago. Now she says she's feeling thankful and blessed to celebrate yet another birthday. Decorated mask to the balloons and signs. It's a one of a kind birthday party. God's been good to me. I have no complaints. For a one of a kind woman who has seen a lot throughout her years. No, I never thought I'd get this far. I never even thought I could get to be 100. At 107 years old, Trudy still lives a very active lifestyle. She enjoys crocheting and playing some of her favorite sports. The girls come in and we do volleyball. But there's nothing she loves more than her family. Yes, I'm so surprised. <laughs> yes. Oh, they're, they're just wonderful. Five generations of family members stop by to see her on her special day. It's beyond words because we didn't think we'd be able to actually see her in person. She's, she's an exuberant woman uh, and it's just great to celebrate that. And she even got a surprise visit from members of the Milwaukee Fire Department. Oh, you're the fire department. Yep. Okay, yes. that's good. good. <laughs> I'll accept you. <laughs> Trudy says all this attention is just too much. No, I'm supposed to be humble and meek. Yes, and you're not helping me. <laughs> but she's glad to see the faces of her loved ones. And when asked what the secret is to living to 107, for Trudy, it's love and faith. I started taking my spiritual life seriously. That's when things started to change for me. And I think God was, was kind of pleased with me. Wow, can you believe it? 107. Happy birthday, Trudy. Still ahead on Positively Milwaukee. On the outside, it looks like a regular house. But on the inside, it makes life easier for a special group of people. Welcome back. Congratulations, Johnny Mac. You are looking at a John McLaughlin bobblehead. The former Milwaukee Buck star and co-founder of the Mac Fund usually hosts a Mac Fund celebrity softball tournament, but the pandemic canceled it this year. So the Mac Fund has these bobbleheads. Let's make his head move. And they are for sale. Proceeds will fight childhood cancers and blood disorders. There you go. We put a link to them on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page, all for a good cause. Giving us a reason to smile this week, a surprise lunch for people who volunteer to feed the hungry. Cafe Corazon put together lunch for workers at Feeding America, Eastern Wisconsin. The restaurant partners with Noor, a maker of food pantry staples. This is a way to say thank you to dedicated employees. It's a really nice treat to be able to provide lunch because every weekday uh, since uh, the pandemic has started, we have had dedicated staff and dedicated volunteers who are willing to come into our warehouse, sort food, make it available for us to be able to feed the increase in need that we're seeing right here in Milwaukee. And don't forget you can make online donations to Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin. I think it makes me feel happy because spreading love um, to other people who we can't do stuff with, I think it makes me feel happy. And it makes us feel happy too. This is Positively Milwaukee. A group of kids spent the day bringing joy to the residents of East Castle Place. The young people usually engage in person with the seniors, but because of the pandemic, they can't do it this year. So they came up with a project called Lawn of Love, and they used their talent, chalk, and signs to show how much they miss their friends. How special. 
Happy graduation to Ace, the service dog. Now, Ace is the first dog to graduate from the Dogs and Vets program in Palmyra. Ace got to go to his new home with his owner, Trustin. Dogs and Vests is a service dog organization and dogs are trained in life-saving skills. Well, how about this? The city of Port Washington shows its creative flair. This is a new 3D crosswalk. It was painted in Upper Lake Park. It helps drivers slow down for foot traffic. And research actually shows that optical illusions can reduce accidents. A first in Wisconsin, a vacation spot that caters to families who have a loved one dealing with autism or PTSD. Digital reporter James Grove gives us a tour of the Lake Geneva home. This home I'm in in Lake Geneva might seem like a regular house. Well, it's an Airbnb and it's actually the first travel accommodation in the state to have a sensory friendly certification. There's a huge amount of people out there that aren't, that don't feel welcome, that don't feel included, that don't feel like they can travel. Now, travel seekers have a place to go that is accommodating to everyone's needs. Sensory City is a nonprofit that has helped places like Gillette Stadium, where the New England Patriots play, and a Kalahari Resorts location in Ohio become sensory friendly. Now, it's put its first stamp of approval in Wisconsin at this Airbnb at 32 South Walworth Avenue in Williams Bay. So we went with a a uh, very gray tone, very neutral theme. Those with sensory sensitivities can have overwhelming and sometimes debilitating reactions to light, noise, or color. That's why all the soaps and detergents in this Airbnb are either odorless or naturally scented. They have what are called fidgets to get rid of energy, headphones for those with auditory sensitivities, and a weighted blanket to calm someone who might be overwhelmed. The sensory swing, this is a great tool to help de-escalate an overstimulated child. Swinging motion is very calming. These accommodations aren't just meant for children. They're for anyone with PTSD, ADD, or anyone on the autism spectrum. The Airbnb is now open, but it is booked for the first few weeks. You can learn more by searching Lake Geneva Airbnb on Facebook. Local nurses, brave severe weather in Florida, all to help control the spread of coronavirus. Lauren Linder was at Mitchell International for the big send-off. The three nurses are going to help treat COVID-19 patients in Jacksonville, Florida. They took off here from Mitchell Airport Sunday afternoon after a send-off with loved ones and colleagues. And we are just so, so proud of you. Nursing was a calling for Michelle Pinkard and her colleague Megan Eckes. They both work at Ascension in Franklin, where they remain on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. But when Ascension was looking for nurses to assist at their sister hospital in Florida, they immediately signed up. I want to be able to put my skills to use there and hopefully we can help out. They're going to a hospital 10 times larger than Franklin in a state that continues to see more than 9,000 new cases a day. Michelle can only imagine what she'll be walking into. I'm not looking at it as like, am I going to be too overwhelmed? Because every day in nursing can be overwhelming. So you just never know every day what you're going to get. Vice President of Patient Care at Ascension Franklin, Sheila Gansmer, says the program offers her staff a unique opportunity. They understand understand the magnitude of what they're going to do and the help that is needed. While cases are still rising in our area, Sheila says they have the resources here to maintain care locally. But before the nurses go, she sends them off with a prayer and good wishes, forcing reality to set in for Megan as she leaves her husband and four kids behind. I know that I'll keep myself safe so that I can come home safely to them. So that's what I'm going for. True heroes. Thank you, Lauren. The nurses will be in Florida for two weeks. Still ahead on Positively Milwaukee, make way for ducklings. Dozens of abandoned ducks nursed back to nature. Welcome back. Cute video alert. 28 ducks now back into the wild, released from the care of the Wisconsin Humane Society. Adriana Mendez has that story. This area is now the home of 28 little ducks. The Wisconsin Humane Society says this year they have been extremely busy taking care of wildlife animals. 
It's graduation day for these little web feet ducks. It's also kind of like sending your kids off to college. We can't we can't protect them now after this. They have been in the care of the Wisconsin Humane Society Wildlife Hospital since they were hatchlings. The unrelated ducks were all brought in as orphans and nursed to good health. <laughs> We are constantly adjusting that just to making making sure that they're growing adequately and at a healthy rate. Wildlife Supervisor Crystal Charlo Schaefer says these ducks are just one of the many species the Wisconsin Humane Society cares for each year. Right now they have more than 300 wildlife animals in their hospital. We generally admit around 5,000 animals a year. Um, 2020 has been an uh, unprecedented year for, for everyone and our hospital has been exceptionally busy. Crystal says release day is a day they have worked hard to achieve and although some needed a little bit of encouragement to jump out and be brave, eventually each one will find their own way. Release day is always bittersweet. We love our patients, but we know that they're wild and we are so grateful that they can be wild again. That is very beautiful. The Wisconsin Humane Society says if you do find an animal that looks abandoned, make sure you call them before you do anything. Very important. The nomination period is now open for this year's Positively Milwaukee Awards. We honor friends and neighbors who do so much for people but often get very little recognition. People like Joe Flick, a Milwaukee firefighter and founder of Ignite the Spirit. I could have never imagined that I'd be sitting here at 35 years old uh, with the life that I have because of being able to become a firefighter. He's exactly positively Milwaukee. He's the most positive person on his job. Cares a ton about the department and what he does. Truthfully, firefighters want to be proactive and Joe did the proactive step of starting something. Ignite the Spirit is actually, we just, we work to support firefighters and their families in times of need. I take what we do very personally. In 2006, I was stationed on Brady Street at Engine 6. And it was a weekend, I was off, thankfully. Um, but I had a little brother at the time that had an accident down off of uh, Farwell. He passed away that night. My crew, my guys that worked, were the ones that handled that call. Like, I still think of that. That was one of the first times that I got to see kind of how people would rally around you when you needed it. In 2017, we were about to lose one of our firefighters to her battle with cancer. Lieutenant Kristen Saganik. She died from cancer that was caused by things that we come in contact with every day. There were a ton of firefighters helping, but there's only so many firefighters. Like those resources eventually run out. It'd be great if there was some sort of a formal ongoing proactive fundraising that we can do to help. That's where it all started from. If one of us went down or one of us needed help to know that there's a organization right like that that's gonna make sure that we're all taken care of, that's love. The fundraising, the parties that we do, the events that we do, they're all fun, right? But the back end of that is you're gonna go meet a family that's in the middle of something heavy that it's not fun to be around. We're bad at asking for help because it shows weakness. And I was there. You know, 19 years here in the city and, and 22 years total, it, things built up and I wouldn't ask for help and I wouldn't ask for help. I mean, I felt like I was at the lowest point of my life. I got to the point last year where there were numerous times where I had either opened the drawer and looked at my nine millimeter that was sitting there and a few times where I had actually uh, put it to my head and thought about pulling the trigger and it came to the point where it was time for me to go get help it was very last minute and the plane ticket was going to cost close to eight hundred dollars to go out and get me help that's where Joe and Ignite the Spirit stepped in and they paid for not only my plane ticket to go out there but for one of our peer support members to fly out with me. If I hadn't gone there, I probably wouldn't be around. I mean, that place saved my life. And they helped me get there. I think it was probably another six months or so was when um, we realized that Tony was gonna be hurt in a bad way. 
on about five and a half, six years ago, my wife was first diagnosed with cervical cancer. And then she was clear for about a year. And then it had metastasized or grew to her lungs. My crew and I were working on Christmas and I remember getting the phone call from Tony's dad. And it just sucked the life out of the entire day, of all days. You know, it's gotta be on Christmas. It was probably about a month went by before we were able to host uh, the benefit. I tried to help with uh, the mounting medical bills that were coming. I think the final number, um, after all was said and done, was a little over $30,000. That, that was a big event for us. Effectively wiped out their medical debts that they had left over from the last couple of years. It was phenomenal. And the biggest thing about that was that I was able to bring my boys and show them you're not doing this alone. You have all these people behind you. I don't really know where myself or my fan would be if, uh, if it wasn't just for the individuals and Ignite and Joe and people involved in it. Having Ignite the Spirit in the City of Milwaukee Fire Department, everyone says is probably one of the greatest things that we've done as a department, and especially Joel taking charge that we've done in a very, very long time. He's really taken this organization and um, has this passion for it that it, it's just, it, it's amazing. At the end, you remember the people that were there for you, and you remember the impact that it made. As this grows, I hope that it gives people a chance to interact with their firefighters more, to learn more about our fire department, the people who work for it, the jobs that we do, the different types of things that we face every day, day in and day out. I think we're going to help a lot more people along the way. Pretty incredible. Joe won our Community Hero Award last year, and he is a remarkable leader. Do you know someone who's going the extra mile? Nominate them for a Positively Milwaukee Award. We have seven categories and we have them listed on the nomination page. You can only enter online. Go to tmj4.com slash awards for everything you need. I'll be right back with my quote of the week. Each week, I like to leave you with an inspirational message. Today's circles back toward our first story from our triathlete, Nia. It comes from novelist Toni Morrison. If there's a book you want to read, but it hasn't been written yet, you must be the one to write it. Thank you for watching, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Stay positively Milwaukee.